I'm Eddie Ferrari, uh, Carpenters Local, uh, 255 in New Jersey. This is Workforce Education 105, lesson number five. Okay, um, the program is Carpentry, the course title is Rough Framing, and we were talking about the common rafter, and we're going to demonstrate uh, the step-off method. So, in my opinion, as a carpenter, one of the most re rewarding tasks is framing a roof. However, sometimes it can be the most frustrating if calculations and formulas aren't made exactly right. <clears throat> Today we are going to discuss the step-off method. The step-off method is a technique that allows a carpenter to effectively lay out a common rafter without using any mathematical formulas, only the framing square. <clears throat> we are going to learn the parts of the framing square, the, making, the markings on the framing square, and how the framing square does the rafter calculations for us. Once we have learned the framing square um, and how it can work for us, I'm going to demonstrate the step-off method and how you can make it work for you without doing no mathematical formulas. So it was my hope that uh, the step-off method will help you gain confidence and understanding of roof framing um, and you'll be able to tackle the process on your own. Alright, so our objectives for today are to define the parts of the common rafter, identify layout tools, describe rise and run, and demonstrate the step-off method. Alright, so this is a typical common rafter. The common rafter is the basis of any roof you, that you're going to make. Everything comes off of the common, ra common rafter. All the calculations, um, everything is based off the common rafter. So we're going to start with this one first. So this is a common rafter, okay? The part up here, this is our ridge cut. This is the part that's at the top of the roof. Here is our bird's mouth. This is our heel, and this is our seat cut. We're a minimum of an inch and a half here, so it grabs the top plate, and minimum of a three and a half inch seat, so it sits completely on the top plate. Here is our... Um, our rafter tail, our plumb cut, and our soffit cut. The dimension from the ridge to the, um, the building line, also called the hap, is uh, what we call our, called our line length of our rafter. This is our hap. Our hap stands for height above plate. That is the distance from the C-cut to the top of the rafter. So now we're going to talk about rise and run. Rise is the vertical distance. Run is the horizontal distance. Anytime we do common rafters, we base everything on 12, for 12 inches. So the roof that we're going to do, we're going to start out with, is a 512. It's a 512 pitch, meaning that this roof rises 5 inches for every foot of run. So what's the run? Well, first we have to start with this dimension here. From outside of building to outside of building is, we're going to call it for room purposes here, 8 foot. So that's our span. So our span is 8 foot. Run is half of that distance. So your run only travels to the center. Because each rafter only travels halfway across the roof. So our run is 4. So that's telling us that we have four units of run to make it to the center part of the ridge. So if I draw it out for each one, one, two, three, four. Each one is 12 inches. Now when this rafter is rising up, it's going to travel 12 inches on the level, but because it's rising, that distance is going to be greater from unit of run to unit of run. There's one, two, three, and four. So an easy way to find out what the run of a 512 roof is, is to go to your framing square. The framing square has a blade and a tongue. The blade is 24 inches long, and it has a scale on it. 
So the scale says length per um, foot of a common rafter. So you find your number, and I'm going to come to 5. So I'm at 5, okay? And the number is 13. So right there it gives us the math that every distance here is going to be 13 inches. So every unit of that rafter to travel 12 inches, to travel a, a, a foot of run, it has to be 13 inches long because it's because it's on that angle. So there's a there's a mathematical formula for it, but because we have the framing square, which is 16 by 24, if we measure 12 being our unit run and 5 being our rise, if I measure from 5 and 12, let's see if we can get that in there. Right here, the dimension is 13. If you know, if you wanted to change it up, you just measure from your rise to your run of it's going to be 12, and then it'll it'll tell you the distance. Okay, so now we're back to the rise and run. We know that we have a 512 roof. And we know the distance of our 512, what our rafter is traveling, is 13 inches. So if we were going to do the mathematical formula, all we do is we take our run of 4, times it by 13, and it equals 52. Okay. So that's telling us the line length of a rafter. When we went over the common rafter, our line length. From the top of the plumb cut, this is before deductions, from the plumb cut all the way to our building line where our heel cut is, it, the top here is 52 inches. From ridge cut to the um, hat. However, we don't even need that mathematical formula because we have our framing square. And we're going to take this framing square and step off the units of run four times, one, two, three, four, to lay out the rafter. So if I was going to step off this rafter, I don't need any math. All I need to know is how wide the building is, which is eight foot, divide it in half to get my run. So as soon as I have that four, so I have that four and I have my pitch. So I need to know it's a 512 pitch with four units of run. So we talked briefly about the framing square. For this purposes, all we need to know is the, uh, the tongue and the blade. So this is your unit rise and this is your unit run. If you have any trouble forgetting which goes where, the roof pitch is always the smaller number. 5, 12, 6, 12, 10, 12, and this is always going to be 12 on a common rafter. So big number, big side little number, little side. So we're going to hold 5 on the little side and 12 on the big side. The biggest thing is to hold when on the markings is when you're going to lay it out that if I'm holding 5 here on the outside I have to hold 12 on the outside. You can't put one on the inside and one on the outside. It throws it off. So if I'm holding 5, 12 I have to be both inside or both outside. So we're going to, to lay this out, the only tools we need is a framing square. I call these acorns. Um, people call them stair gauges. But I just always call them acorns. And this is going to let us so we can do a repetitive motion of our layout with our rafter square. They're made out of brass. Okay. Um, pencil. And all we need to tape measure for is our deductions. Okay. So I have my framing square, I have my tongue, and I have my blade. I have my black magic marker that you should always use a pencil just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to show you with uh, the marker. So I like to do it by hand. I'm going to hold the 5 on the little side of the square, the tongue, and 12 on the big side of the square. So we start off, and the first mark I'm going to make is my ridge cut, 5 and 12. 
So we have four units of run. So I make a little mark here. Oh, sorry. And I rate a one. That's my first unit of run. And we have four of those. So I slide on down. Okay. So I'm at five and twelve. Five on the little side, twelve on the big side. Make a little mark. I rate a two. Slide down again. Five and twelve. And mark again, and I rate a three. Remember, we said the rafter travels 13 inches. So every single time we move this square down, we're traveling 13 inches on our board. And going down again. So this is our last unit of run. So I'm five and 12. So I mark it. Okay. I come down here and hold five and 12. And I square that down. The mark that I just squared down, that's our building line. That's the outside of our building. So if you come back here, we have one, two, three, four units of run to give us 52 inches. Come back over here. Okay, so the first thing I do once I have this. I check out all my um, my ridge cut, make sure everything's good, and I come down and I'll mark out my rafter tail. You can do the calculation for the rafter tail as well, but I just like to bring the square um, straight up, put it level on the line, and I want a six inch rafter tail, so I, I'm level with the line on a 512 pitch, and then I just measure out six inches. Mark it. And I bring my square in, 5 and 12, and slide it into position. Okay, that's my rafter tail. So now we're talking about the bird's mouth right here. You can measure up an inch and a half, and then slide your square in to get that minimum inch and a half. But you may not always end up with the seat cut. So what I like to do is take the 512 and sl just slide it in until I'm three and a half inches away. So right around 15 and a half. So I hold 5, 12, and then when 15 and a half hits the line, that's when I square across my bird's mouth. So I'm going to get three and a half on the seat and an inch and a half up um, so it can grab, you know, grabs a full bearing on the top plate and, a, and a, the heel grabs against, um, you know, the, the, the side of the 2 by material. So the only other thing you have to do left next is your deductions. You have to deduct half the thickness of your ridge. Generally when you're stick framing, everything's one by material. So it's three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to mark three quarter. We got 512. And I always exit out so I don't cut the wrong line. So there's my deduction there. And I have a 2x6 going for my fascia board. So this I deduct in as well, but I deduct a full inch and a half. Your frame and square measures an inch and a half, so you don't even have to measure in this one either. I hold 512, slide it in, just square down my square. X that out, give myself a cut line. Okay, so there we have it. We have a, um, a 512 common rafter that we stepped off with no math. Today we learned how to make the framing square work for us. We had the framing square do all the calculations of, of the um, common rafter. And my hope is that it gave you a little bit of confidence, uh, more understanding of the process of the roof theory, and so you can kind of tackle it on your own. If you have a framing square, scrap piece of wood at home or on the job site, you can practice it. Um, it takes a few few minutes to, to, to really get it down. You kind of fumble with the square first, but 
you'll be just fine. So next class, uh, we're, we're going to go over the one number method using a speed square. All you guys carry a speed square every single day. Uh, not many people even look at the markings on it. The speed square is even way easier to lay out a, um, a common rafter. So next, next week we're going to go over the, the one number method of using a speed square to lay out a common rafter. So have a good evening. Do your homework. And I'll see you next week.